What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, ABK, back again with another video. Um, I know last week that I didn't post my analysis on YouTube and everything like that, and it's just because I don't know what was up with my internet. It was just really taking a long time to do stuff. And so right now I'm just in my living room because my daughter is, is in the office with her friend. And so I'm just going to do an overview of my analysis from last week. And so now I have the video up here, but I'm obviously going to enlarge it. So when I need to see what I had predicted or what I had analyzed, we can see what went wrong and what happened. Obviously, we know the DXY, had it didn't give a fuck what anybody had to say. It just started dropping. And so I'm going to go ahead and just take a look at that. Um, later on today, I do have my analysis, weekly analysis. And so I'm going to try to post this up before I post that up. But I know it's like a double whammy, but you guys would just watch the new analysis because that's what matters the most versus having to go and look at the the review. I just want to do a review so I could just see what um, what I did right, what I did wrong, all that good stuff. And just take a look, you know? So I'm going to go ahead and get that started. I'm going to um, take off my video because that's what makes the like video blurry and stuff like that. So yeah. Or not the video, the audio. It it does um impact it does end up impacting the video quality. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So oh, what I had mentioned for the DXY was I'm gonna put those for so for the DXY I did mention that I do I wasn't in favor for the buys because everything was pointing down and um, when I post this up on my Telegram page, I'll, I'll also send it. I'll also um, do a reply to my previous analysis so that you guys can see, like, oh, okay, so that's what he said. But yeah, so this is what I, I showed before. I said that it's either going to go up from here, which I wasn't feeling at all, like I said. I, I said I wasn't feeling the DXY. And, or I said that it's going to drop the retest and then continue going down. So it go, we got the drop. So now I'm expecting a retest to happen. But I'll, yeah, I'll talk more about that once I see, once I do my analysis later today, right? But for the DXY, um, that's what happened. And unfortunately, like I like I said, like if you were down for the buy and stuff like that, which I was, I'm not gonna lie because I'm a risky trader, but I knew what I was risking. So again, like I, I we got the sell on the DXY, so that's that played out well. Um, let me check this out a little bit more. Yeah, so I didn't think that I didn't honestly think that price was going to go lower, and we could even see. Let me get rid of this because this is wrong. We can even see the DXY even crept up a little higher. So this possibly again, I still I at this point I do now think that this is totally bearish. Let me look at the weekly time frame real quick. Huge, huge weekly time frame close candle. It's showing it's oversold. So I just kind of want to see a pullback. And I like where it stopped at, at the three deviations. I just want to pull back back up to here. The continuation to the downside is what I'm expecting. But like I said, I'll talk more about that during my analysis later this later today. So let's go ahead and go on to EURUSD because I know that's second was saying like it's risky to take the sell and so it, like i said if you're a risky trader like how i am you could take the sell go ahead and try it but price did end up going bullish we never got the retracement in fact let me go on to here we never got the retest because price did go bullish we never got the retest that i wanted price went up it kept going up so uh talk more about that later on but euro usd is it was still way bullish and even the rsi line you can see right here that it came, it crept down. So it's still in here. But to say that this is going to reverse anytime soon, it would be premature. So I'm just going to, right now, we're still overall bullish on this. It's like just ridiculous. Like it looks like it's a, <laughs> realistically speaking, it looks like it's like in level two rise on the daily time frame with market makers. But that's a totally different thing. So I'm sure GPUSD is next. Yep, I said it right there. Like I said, everything is calling for a buy except for the 15 minute time frame. If that 15 minute time frame would have called for the sell, then yeah, like I got in a quick sell because it was selling for a little bit, then it went bullish. So 
<laughs> Sorry, I had to sneeze. But so, regardless, yeah. So EU went bullish, went according to plan. Just didn't get a retest, but that went according to plan. I said that, okay, so price was rejecting off of here. So I was hope I was thinking and hoping that price was going to break through the RSI line to the downside, then retest and continue to the downtrend. Because I was saying as long as on the weekly time frame, price maintains holding over price maintains holding under this RSI line on that weekly time frame, that price would go bearish. And so it didn't do that. So it went bullish instead of naturally, right? And so I should have just usually I usually just stick with my daily time frame or like yeah, daily time frame. If it's under or over our sideline, which I'll take it. And so it rejected off of right here. That would have been a perfect entry for a buy. Boom, take it to the upside. So that was my fault on GU. I was thinking it was going to go bearish. It never did. And even on the lower time frames, I wanted a retest and pushed up, which that's exactly what it did. It did fake us out for the sell, but then very next couple candles, it went for a buy on the hourly. But yeah. So we got that retest to the downside and then push back up. So GU overall throughout the week was a success on the charts, but like I, I'm trying not to give, I don't want to give signals to my channel. I just want to give guidance and direction and have some of you guys figure out yourselves because not everybody has arbitrage, but then again, I also want to be able to help others. So, but yeah, GU played out with this bio right here. So on the analysis, I didn't call for a buy, but or I didn't say that I think that it was going to go for a buy. But yeah. Oh, never mind. Because I had even showed a right uh, inverse head and shoulders. Saying, oh, this looks like a, a inverted head and shoulders pattern that I'm seeing. So that ended up playing out. Then never mind them. I take back saying that it didn't play out like how I wanted it to because it did. It went bullish because I was even looking like I, that's why you do top down analysis, right? Um, it went bullish. It did retest and come to the place where I wanted it to come down to, to go back to being bullish. So it was a complete success. And to really think about it, um, GU, I actually got some profits off of I got a good profits off of it last week. I ended, me personally, I ended the week negative, but not by that much. But I ended the week negative by like a thousand or something like that. And so that's just what happened. Hey, it is what it is. And that's because of other trades, not because of GU. GU was one of the trades that actually played out successfully. So, all right, we'll go on to the next one. I, don't, I didn't even want to get into the trade regardless because it didn't look good to me for the buy personally because especially with the Atlas, it was showing that it was bearish. And so I'll go ahead and go here, USD CAD. USD CAD. <laughs> So exactly what well, I was, I, I was, I was like, I didn't even want to get into this. UCAD came and bit and went bearish. It called for the sell right here. So, like I said, I didn't even want to get in to that trade. Um, I'll do my analysis later, so I'm not even gonna talk on this. Um, but yeah, UCAD definitely from right here. Look, boom. This is where I said I don't even like the buy, so I'm not even gonna get in. And then boom, all of this price just ended up dropping. So, gonna call this quite a like an a, a accurate analysis because like I said, I didn't even want to get into the buy regardless and price ended up dropping way more. So that's cool. Okay, go on to the next one. Much insight on USDJPY. It just it just looked a whole lot of messy last week. Oh uh, let me see though what I I said midweek. I forgot I didn't even trade USDJPY that much. Okay, so this was 20th, 17th. So right here, 
I think the day after price came in rejected off here. So like, all right, so UJ right now, I think it's just going to drop, which it hella dropped. I was not expecting it to drop like that, but gold also went bullish. So I did, that doesn't surprise me. So this hella dropped. So yeah. Um, but that, like I said, this wasn't part of my analysis though. It was at the end, I was like at like during the week, during the weekly analysis that I said that. So it kind of doesn't, matter if I got it right or whatever. I just said that it's just a crazy pair and I went with it along with the week, although I didn't trade it at all. So, yeah. All right. So I had this trend that price is still at this level and I'm thinking that it was, it's going to hold right here. Right. But I did also say that the four hour was calling for the sell. So you want to watch for that. So let's go ahead and, go to the chart and see how that translate and how what ended up happening that's why sometimes it's not cool to just go off with support and resistance because i'm pretty sure this hella broke through it oh it destroyed it go on the four hour time frame and look for that exact cell call that i mentioned All right, so daily time frame right here. This is the candle I said that I expect price to hold and then go bullish, right? But I said on the four hour time frame, top down analysis is hella important that it called for this, it called for this cell. So with this cell, and here, I can move it right here so you can see. So this cell that it called right here, that's why I was like, oh, you want to watch out for that because if this, if this cell is out, it's going to go ahead and drop. And it dropped huge like and these are all pairs that i didn't even look at throughout the week but that dropped a good 204 pips if you had a, a one lot size that's two grand right there could have made your week so that's with usdchf but definitely i'm happy how this played out i did but all i'm kind of expecting now is a pullback and then continuation so see how that goes so yeah, US Chef was pretty successful. Let's look at the next pair. Yeah, like I said, I was saying that like this structure that it has up here. Let me actually enlarge it. This structure that it has up here on the video, I was saying it's kind of iffy. So you have to watch that. And exactly, that was unfortunate. I think like a couple of even minutes, like an hour or two after, it gave me that 15 minute alert for me to get out. So yeah. All right, so GA, just like EA, gave us a little fake out business. You feel me? Um, I'm liking what I'm seeing on the four hour as of right now. But so a price did end up dropping. It dropped a lot, actually. So from when I said that price was in this zone, price dropped about 300 pips. Nobody wants to be in a 300 pip drawdown. And so, but when it comes to Right now, it's the, it did end up coming back up and breaking through this zone, which on the four-hour time frame made a call for a buy. So, as I always say, it wouldn't be GA if it wasn't playing games. I'm still bullish on this, but it's just been playing games. And that's the thing about when you're doing an analysis on like for like every week, it's things might not play out as you want them to as soon as possible. That's why you always cut. Well, not always, but you kind of have to just continuously watch through the markets throughout the week. So that's for GA. Go on to the next one. All right. So I did mention that, okay, so price did end up breaking through this structure here. And so I expect the price to drop down before going um continuous continuing going bullish and so that's exactly what it looks like maybe happening i still want this to come down a little more for it to go bullish and therefore yeah just can't that just, what i said on the analysis for au was incorrect i was expecting it to just go bearish but instead it went bullish so yeah there's au made that mistake and it's just yeah it's it was already up at this high I should have expected that it would continue, especially with the Atlas on the daily time frame not even changing color to red. So, and again, that's the that's the thing about the daily time frame. It takes way longer for moves to play out than on the one hour or the fifteen minute. 
Damn, man. Gold really is at 1900 right now. So, yeah. I wanted it to come down to, like, where is it at? It was up here. I wanted it to just come drop down to 1795. But then I'm like, okay, so this isn't going to work in my Telegram channel, I'm pretty sure, and also in, um, oops, and also in Slack, so, or Slack, so I'm pretty sure that, yeah, everybody knew what was, what was going on. But yeesh, 1915, that's the all time high of gold. So when it gets up there, we can see something happen, whether it's going to continue. Or if it's gonna drop, so that's for gold. Excuse my dog from drinking loud, <laughs> but yeah. Let's see. So it looks like the cell that we had, I that had actually called was pretty. It wasn't ideal because price did end up going back up and then it dropped again. So it was it was kind of weird how go how the Dow Jones played out but it ended up dropping. So this was the sell that we had. Price dropped a little bit, but then it went higher and then it ended up crashing. So it's it just played out. I didn't really care for the Dow Jones, how it moved. Would have a better reading on it this week than last week though. Been back testing a couple of things. So we'll show you guys those new things on my analysis later today. Let's go ahead and continue. So Euro JPY. This is what I have for it. All right, so Euro JPY. I'm pretty sure this, yeah, this was the zone I was talking about that it looks risky for the buy. I mean, look risky for the sell. And then price ended up dead breaking through. So. Again, that was, it. like as I was mentioning, I was like, this doesn't really look bearish to me. So this was ended up being a fail, but price is at these recent higher highs that I made back in June. So I have to kind of see if price is going to break through and go bullish, but we'll take a look at that later on today. So your JPY was a flop as well. I'm even glad I didn't get in because my analysis was wrong and it broke through and went bullish. So I want to see a so I want to see a retest, a pullback, and then upside. Just no, it was it's basically like a 70%, like 60%, 40% week, the way how it looks. I don't think I said anything. I'd added any other pairs I was looking at here. And you let me see, let me just see. I looked at EuroCAD, but I don't really trade it. And Bitcoin, so yeah. Overall, I did say that. Even with Bitcoin, I said here, I even go there and for you to look at it. Still, I'm for the retest, and then kind of pump up, I guess. Yeah, Bitcoin, even, even with Bitcoin. Like or something like that. Yeah, even with Bitcoin, I mentioned that okay, I think is if if you're gonna get into a buy or something like that, wait for a little pullback and then then buy it. So. Let's go to Bitcoin real quick. I know Bitcoin is booming because my crypto wallets, they're doing decent. But what I want to do is come here. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, Bitcoin definitely boomed up to 9,000. God damn, I'd even... It came up to 10,000. Oh, it was not going to hold up here again? Wow, bro. See, this is... Bitcoin irritates me sometimes. So it called for the buy on the 21st, and then it was going bullish. Like I'm, And so I want to see if it's going to break through this. But yeah, like I was saying, um, it definitely was kind of like a 70%, 30% week. When it came to the analysis, um, a lot of pairs have been playing around. And a lot of USD pairs, like I said, um, I wasn't expecting the USD to drop like how it did before getting, like, going into collect liquidity up at a certain places or anything like that. But it was still, it was a good week overall. It was a pretty decent week overall. When you're looking at everything and not just focusing on the negatives, then overall it was a great week. 
Um, I wish I wish my MT4 account reflected that right now, but it is what it is. But yeah, so later on today, I'm gonna be doing my analysis, gonna post that up and get some fire setups because I see a lot of potential in this week's move in this week's pairs that could happen. So thanks you guys for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, 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 share. Please share the, my page, my YouTube page, my Telegram page, my whatever page. Please um, share it with your friends and family so that I can get exposure and stuff like that because at the end of the day that's all i really want you know so again thank you guys appreciate you for tuning into my review and have a good weekend